previous program on the subject of cooperative credit societies, I dealt with the Kumana Agricultural Cooperative. Tonight, the series continue with a similar organization in the South. It is the Penal Rock Amalgamated Agricultural Cooperative Society. To find out more about their operations, I spoke to members of the executive. Your name, sir? Garib Suraj. How long have you been active in cooperatives? Since 1961, in the Goodman Trace Agricultural Credit Society, where I was vice president. What has happened to the Goodman Trace Agricultural Credit Society? Due to amalgamation, it is struck off from this registrar. What post do you hold with this society at the moment? Secretary Manager. Why is the society called the Penal Rock Amalgamated? Due to the amalgamation of five societies in the area, they are as follows. Grand Trace, Hope Trace, Goodman Trace, Monjablo, and Pinal Rock, which is your subsequent name. When did this take place? On the 18th of August, 1970. What was your membership like on amalgamation? 250. Now it's 350. I see that you have a great deal of coffee in your storeroom. Are all your members coffee growers? No, about 25%. We also have cocoa. Pigeon peas, corn, poultry, pigs, cattle, and sugar cane growers. What are your marketing operations like? We collect the coffee from the members and transport them to Port of Spain to the Cocoa and Coffee Cooperative. Has the society a license for dealing with produce such as coffee and cocoa? No, we are an affiliate of the Cocoa and Coffee Cooperative. From your report, your society operates in several areas. Can you tell me something about your loans operations? Members depend on finance on the estate. Before the beginning of the financial year, <coughs> they apply for loans. Then the application is sent to the ADB. This loan is repayable in one year. At present, we are embarking on credit rating, ably assisted by the department and the ADB. Credit rating means that farmers will be assessed and given loans according to when they need it. What are your assets like? $40,000. Does this include the building? Yes. This building was planned and designed by our past secretary manager, Mr. Vincent Fortune. Material was supplied by Mr. Sigovin Dipti, and was constructed by Mano Garcia. Next, I spoke to the designer of the headquarters of the Pinal Rock Amalgamated Cooperative. Your name, sir? Vincent Fortune. What post do you hold in this society? A member of the Board of Management. Suraj tells me that you designed and supervised the construction of your headquarters. Yes, prior to the amalgamation and to the construction of this building there were the need for a headquarters for our society as the membership grew that much and we had to find a permanent place a, con a temporary office was constructed next to the building which we now owns. There was still the need for a bigger headquarters. And as such, the members decided to purchase two lots of land, most centrally located for the entire mode society. What happened then? After the land was purchased, the members decided that a plan should be drawn up of a proper building. This 
was entrusted to me to prepare the plan, design the building, and supervise the building when the time come. This was done. It was taken back to the committee and to the general membership where approval was given for the building. After this was done, it was taken to the Commissioner for Cooperative Development for his final approval. After receiving the approval from the Commissioner, the plans were then sent to the government for approval. After the plans were approved, we decided that we would have to apply for a loan from the AD Bank for the construction of this building. After the loan was approved, the next stage was to find a contractor. The committee contacted a few contractors, but the one of our choice was the T's Hardware. At their agricultural supplies store, I was lucky to meet Frank Achaiba, who is president of the cooperative. Frank, when did the store start operating? At the conclusion of our building, we started our operation in the late part of September 1971. Uh, in the beginning, the cooperative was well patronized by its members because there was a need for this type of a supply store in the area. What supplies are sold here? Well, in our store, we sell a, a wide variety of supplies ranging from picture lamps to building materials. If I'm permitted to elaborate, some of the items are uh, building materials, seeds, fertilizers, insecticides, cement, wire, household items such as stoves and buckets, boots and paint, and last but not least, a, a wide variety of feeds. When you say animal feeds, what do you mean? By animal feeds, we mean feeds for poultry and pigs. In our cooperative, one single member purchases about one ton of poultry feed for the week. That is approximately 40 bags. What does the farmer member gain from patronizing his store? Well, this is the whole concept of cooperatives. Uh, in, uh, in the early times when we were single societies, we had trouble in obtaining our supplies. Now that we have united and formed one unit, the society can purchase in bulk at cheaper rates and the society can pass on these supplies to its members. The member now can save on transportation and other items. In addition, the member can plan his operations to suit because he knows that he can get his supplies when they are needed and that his supplies are usually fresh. Jairam Tahalu is a mixed farmer. His chief means of livelihood is rice growing, which he has done from boyhood. I asked him about rice in general. Jairam, can you tell me how many acres of land you have under cultivation? Yes, about two acres of rice under cultivation. And what are your yields from these acres? About 18 barrels per acre. Do you grow the same strain of rice each year? No, every three or five years I change the diff different types of rice. In what way has the cooperative helped you? By giving me money and time to supply labor and to plow land and so on. Do you grow any other crops? Yes, I do grow other crops, such as melon, peas, pumpkin and so on. Do you have any problems in this area? Yes. A few couple of years back now we have heavy flooding and we can't get the crop that we should. That is due to uh, where the water passes through the Al Channel, 
There's a bridge across the trace. They have dismantled the bridge and replaced it with culverts. And the volume of water cannot pass through that small culvert. Yes, will be much better. Will be far improved. Because at before times in the low lying land we should get crops of rice and we don't get it from them. Is this because there's too much water? Too much water. I next spoke to a cane farmer of the area. Her name, Lillian Gilbert. And I asked her about the operations of her cane farm. Lillian, can you tell me how many acres of cane you have under cultivation? Five acres. To whom do you sell your cane? Using St. Madeline. Do you have any problems? Well, no. All the problems that he has in is transportation. What ha happened today now? Do you still have transportation problems at this time? Well, no, because we have a cart of our own and going with the load since morning. Well, up to now, I, didn't, I haven't seen it come back yet. I don't know what happened. How many loads do you cut per day? We cut two, sometimes three loads for the day. In what way the cooperative helps you? The cooperative helps me by giving me a loan. And that loan helps me to get fertilizer and also pay workmen, men and women, to assist in. Do you pay workmen to help you reap the cane? No, not to reap the cane. Who helps you with this? With your children. And yourself? And myself, yes. And how many cartloads per day do you reap? Well, three cartloads for the day. We usually carry three cartloads for the day. I spoke to Assing Nelson, a member of the cooperative, who is a farmer. Assing, can you tell me how many years you have been in the cooperative movement? I have been in the cooperative movement for three years, which is uh, Grand Street, which is now amalgamated to the Pinal Rock Cooperative. How many acres of land have you under cultivation at the moment? I have about 25 acres of land under cultivation, most of which is cuckoo and coffee. There are other small crops such as figs, grommichel, but not on a commercial scale. Do you sell your produce to the cooperative? Yes, I sell my produce to the cooperative, who in turn sells it to the cooperative in Port of Spain, who is responsible for the export market. In what way does the cooperative help you? The cooperative help me, helps me first by making loans available to me when I need it, and uh, secondly, by making available pesticides and, agro and um, agriculture, uh, pesticides and, how you call it again? Fertilizers. <laughs> yes, and fertilizers at uh, reasonable rates. Is the business of borrowing from the cooperative profitable? Yes, the business of borrowing from the cooperative is most profitable. Uh, first, uh, because, you, because of the loans that they make available to you when you need it. And secondly, you are able to spend more time in your cultivation. Do you have any problems in this area? Yes, we have problems in this area. And uh, the first problem is pre larceny. Second, uh, and uh, most important of all, is agricultural access roads. These roads are not up to mark because during the rainy season, when we need it most, we are not able so as to get even down cuts so as to bring out our produce. Who is responsible for the upkeep of the roads? Uh, I believe, uh, I understand that um, 
government through the Ministry of Agriculture is responsible for the upkeep of the roads. Do you have any other problems in the area? Yes. We have another very important problem. And uh, I hope that something can be done to it as early as possible. And that problem is water. Especially for the farmers who rear pigs, cattle and poultry. During the dry season, when we need the water most, we do not get it. Uh, the water is being supplied by truck during the dry season, and these and this supply do not come in regularly. Are there any pipes in the area? There are pipes in the area, but as I said before, most at most of the time, these taps are empty. Another member of the cooperative lives at Mendez Trace, Pura, and he's a poultry farmer. <laughs> Your name, sir? Ram Narayan Singh. How long have you been in the cooperative? About uh, approximately a year, sir. And how long have you been in the poultry business? About six years. How much poultry do you have here? Well, 200 and 2,500 heads. And how do you dispose of them? Uh, I have the vendors that come and buy for me every week. How much you sell? Well, sometimes 200 heads. It varies. Sometimes 230 heads, 50 heads. Have you had any problems within recent months? Yes, sir. We had the floods. And what were your losses like? Well, it drowned three of my shed, and the chicken well I lost. Um, 1,300 to 500 heads. I'm told that you all have a water problem in the area. Do you care to talk about it? Yes, sir. No, we don't have any fiber water in this district here. If I had the fiber and water here, I would be able to extend my farm. And what do you do for water? Well, I have two big tanks and barrels. In the rainy season, I collect water in them and supply my chicks. And a driver at that time, they have to get truck, bring in water. Do you pay for this? Yes, sir. Have you any plans for expansion? Yes, sir. Do you care to tell me about them? Yes, sir. Well, as you see, I have some tiles, sand and things by. I want to extend three sheds on the higher portion and band on those on the lower side that I get drunk in. Is the cooperative going to help you in this? Yes, I promise to help you, sir. In what I was going to way? get some loan and decide to help me with feed until I get to level up myself. Who's going to help you with your building? Well, I would have to get one or two men, but my children will help me because I haven't cash now. It's mainly a family concern. Family concern, yes. And they have helped you in the past. Yes, sir.